everybody, it's Mrs. Harbin, and we're on Video Notes 4.3, where we're going to talk about the different kinds of bonding, the functions that molecules have because of their bonding, and then um, identify and name acids. Make sure you read section 5.6 in these pages in the book. Okay, so acids. What are acids? They all have one thing in common, the ones we're going to look at. They all have hydrogen to start with. So if you see H to start a compound, then you should say, hello, hello, this is an acid, H for high, H for hydrogen, H for hello. And then um, we're going to be learning how to name these compounds a little differently than other ones. Okay, so if you see an H, you know that it's an acid. Or if you see the word acid, you know it's an acid. So how do we write their names and formulas? Well, the first part is always the H plus from the acid. So the second part is the anion. Anions can end in three um, endings, ide, ide, or eight. So if it, the original anion ended in ide, then you put hydroic acid. Okay. If the original anion, like sulfite, ends in ite, then you put us acid as the ending. If the original anion ended in eight, like phosphate, then you change the ending to ic acid. Okay. So H3PO4 is phosphoric acid. HClO3 comes from chlor eight, so it's chloric acid. Uh, HCl comes from chloride, so it's hydrochloric acid. Right? So there's three endings for acids based on three endings for ions. And then um, when you put the acid formula together, you put enough H's to cancel charge. Let's practice. H2S, hello, I'm an acid. And so the S is from sulfide. So this is going to be hydrosulfuric acid. Right. Hello, I'm an acid. I start with hydrogen, and SO4 negative 2 is sulfate. Right. So then this is going to be sulfuric acid. Right. Because ide goes to hydroic acid, 8 goes to ic acid. And hello, I'm an acid. I ended with sulfite, and so it's sulfur us acid. All right, so I turns to us, eight turns to ick, I turns to hydro. Oh look, it's three acids. How do I know? It says the word acid in the name. So I know it has to have an H plus, an H plus, an H plus. All right, ick acid came from eight. Nit come from nitrate. So this must be NO3, which is negative. And H, which is a positive, so HNO3 is, whoops, I lied totally to you because guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to look at the hydro, okay? So hydro, it came from ide. So ide um, means N3 negative, nitride. So the formula for this acid is H3N. I need three of these H's to make this compound. Nitric acid, all right, this time, really, for real, not kidding, it's nitrate. Because it ends in H3. That's HNO3 because nitrate is NO3 with negative 1. Nitrous acid came from nitrite. So um, nitrite is NO2 with a negative 1. So nitrous acid is HNO2. And I only need one hydrogen for one nitrite. Okay, so besides acids, we have to talk about metals and some other compounds. Metals have variable bond strength. Variable melting points and boiling points, but often high, and good conductors of heat and electricity. They're malleable and they're shiny. We test the properties of metals a lot. You hit them with a the hammer, they bend, so it's malleable. They're shiny, that's lustrous. Okay? They conduct electricity in a solid state. Okay, why, why, why? So a metallic bonding model says that metal atoms are bonded to other metal atoms, but they don't form compounds. Okay, They're just um, mixtures, and if there's two different metals, it's a homogeneous mixture. Metallic bonding occurs through non-directional covalent bonds. That means instead of sharing electrons in one direction to make a molecule, all of the valence electrons are shared between all of the cations room of the metals. Okay, So here's aluminum with its plus 3 charge, so it means it has 10 core electrons, but its 3 outer electrons can be anywhere. This aluminum ion's 3 outer electrons could be anywhere, and these Outer valence electrons that flow through the crystal are called a sea of electrons. So, sort of, they're sharing them all in like this little ocean of electrons. Okay? So, we can determine their properties because of their structure. 
you can hit a metal and it'll bend because the sea of electrons can adjust to keep the atoms or the well the cations well, held together and the valence electrons adjusting to the blow of the hammer so that it bends it's malleable okay electric current can run through metals because as charge goes through those valence electrons can carry the current through to the other side woohoo thanks wires for running our electrical items okay so you got your positive um, nucleus with the core electrons and then the valence electrons of all of those metal atoms are being shared by all of the other metal atoms. Yay, so you have electrons delocalized. Okay, so so far in this unit, we've talked about ionic bonding. Please tell me you know these properties, okay? Woohoo. And please tell me you know these ones now about metals. So we knew the properties, but um, now we're talking about what the electrons do in metals compared to ionics. And then there's more. You'll probably pause this slide, so, but I'm going on because you can pause. All right, now we have three kinds of bonding. Ionic bonding and metallic bonding. We're talking about in this unit. I think cross it out. Covalent bonding we talked about in the last unit. So what kind of atoms? These kinds of atoms. What happens to electrons? C of electrons, shared electrons between atoms, transferred electrons between metals and non-metals usually. All right, conductivity differences, melting point differences. Uh, solubility differences, right? strength of bonds differences. Please know all these characteristics. Make charts, do what you got to do. Plus, you tested them all. Way to go, you. Okay. So another thing to look at is the model. So here's what it looks like if we talk about ionic bonding. There's your crystals, the crystal lattice because of the cations, and the anions lining up in this crystal structure. Metallic bonding, look at that. See of electrons. Covalent bonding can make um, big molecules like sugar. Um, which is actually small compared to other molecules. Little molecules like water, little molecules like carbon dioxide, um, bigger molecules like sulfur hexafluoride, sharing, sharing, sharing electrons. Okay. All right. So one thing we didn't talk about yet is the seven diatomic elements that always hang out with themselves. So whenever hydrogen's by itself, it's going to make a chemical bond with itself to make an H2 molecule. Same thing happens to fluorine. Okay. Whenever fluorine is by itself, it's never really by itself because it makes a molecule called fluorine. They're still called what they are, but it's an F2. It's a di for two atomic element. Okay? And then there's N2, which is going to look like that. O2, wow, I can go on, not forever, at least seven times, right? I2, because it's valence electrons there. Right? So these little molecules are called diatomic because it's two atoms of the same element bonded together. If you look on the periodic table and start with element number seven and outline these six elements, you find out that um, six of our seven are there. And look, it points over to hydrogen. Right? I like to say nofcobrit because that's the word that spells those seven diatomics. You can also say honkelbrit because that's fun to say. But if you say nafkobrich, you're saying them in order, and they're pointing to hydrogen. That's the last one you got forming up. Okay. And those are your seven diatomics. They um, always pair up if they're alone because they're desperate for the company of their other atoms. Okay. So overall, wow, look at this chart. It's a diagram of chemical structure. So what kind of bonding can we have? Ionic, covalent, metallic. Um, and then ionic is the crystals. Metallic is metals. But then covalent, we talked about this kind of covalent, the small molecules, like your CO2 and your N2 and your I2, right? There are some other kinds of things for covalent. This kind is the polymer kind, right? So we made polymers. We're going to talk about them a little in a minute. There's another kind of covalent that doesn't make tiny molecules. It makes a big network, but it's really strong, and they're sharing electrons in all directions um, with other atoms of the same kind or other kinds, so diamond networks. So let me tell you a little more about it. Let's talk about polymers first. Yeah, the flexibility of a polymer is due to its structure. So you get these long chains of molecules, long chain molecules that can fold on themselves or um, attract themselves at other spots, say this long molecule, but then maybe there's some attractions here because of hydrogen bonding or dipole-dipole forces. 
So within the same molecule, you have your covalent bonds holding these together, and then some other attractions to help them fold or stick. Okay. Hey, here's the slime polymer um, structure. So we took the glue, okay. we took the borate, and then we put them together, and so the borate helps cross-link the glues with these hydrogen bonding, H bonds. So then we went from the glue properties and the borate properties to the new slime properties because of this cross-link of hydrogen bonding. Okay. Other kinds of polymers, look, a double bond and a double bond. If you get a bunch of these together, they polymerize and make long chains that repeat the two carbons in a row structure. Two carbons with a chlorine structure repeated over and over and over for the polymer. Okay. But notice one characteristic of the styrene monomer, monomer is the double bond. Okay. Because then it's a reactive place. And they could, because of those two extra electrons and that double bond, keep adding to each other over and over. So we can get flexible polymers, rigid polymers, and fire-resistant polymers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fun types. Hey, how are ionic compounds um, used? Well, their structure helps them have different functions. All right. Here's one reason they're brittle. Okay. Here's one reason they can't conduct electricity when they're solid, because look at those ions are stuck in place. But once we melt them or dissolve them, the ions can move so we can conduct electricity. They're brittle because you hit them with a the hammer and look, you cause repulsions on different lines. Okay. Pharmaceuticals. What? Pharmaceuticals. So um, there's a whole industry that deals with making kinds of molecules that can help, bottle, um, you know, human systems. Right. So these molecules, the purine nucleosides, have um, purine and sugar and phosphate all together. And then they fit nicely into a part of your body. Okay. So then when someone designs a drug to either help or, well, to help usually, um, they want to make a drug that fits in the same place that this purine nucleoside fits. But maybe they want to put it in there so that it blocks something else. Or maybe they want to um, put it in there. Okay. So this tight-fitting new compound that chemists design um, it does what the purine nucleoside does, so it mimics what it does, or it keeps out the purine nucleoside if that's what's causing a problem. So the shape of molecules really helps in enzyme functions and um, in designer drugs. Okay. Um, so here's another thing with proteins. Right? So you have this molecule that fits inside a protein and you can see hydrogen binding and attractions there to help it fit to help the protein fold. So all this stuff going on in your body, yay chemistry, covalent bonds, hydrogen bonds, that kind of stuff. Okay, covalent networks. You have diamond? Nice, good for you. Right. You like sand? Nice, good for you. So you got carbon atoms covalently sharing electrons, shared, shared, shared electrons. Right. And those electrons are stuck there. But then those are stuck and those are stuck. And you get this network of shared electrons. Um, and over time, it makes a diamond. And you have to overcome those strong forces to make it melt or whatever. So a covalent network is still sharing electrons. But the central atom shares with atoms all around it and so on and so on. Okay. So to review, hello, I'm an acid. I start with hydrogen. And um, you have to know the rules. Metallic bonding explains ah, wow, the properties of metals. Memorize your ions. Right? Metals have a valence electron C that helps describe its properties. Covalent bonds um, share electrons evenly or unevenly and make molecules. Ionic bonds make cations and anions. Now, how do you know what type of bond is present? You got to know the props. Right? And then make sure you know... You have evidence to back up your claims. All right. Peace out. Look at the book. Here's our um, objectives. And that's it for this chapter. See you guys soon.